I believe my experience would be much richer if I could make that perspective that everything is by choice of higher self my own. How is my higher self mine if I cannot see it? I don't fully understand that question. Won't my higher self ever ask me before making a decision so we could come up together with what's the best decisions? That's what's constantly happening. It's constantly asking you for your approval. And your life is a reflection of that completely. If you don't approve, you're not going to get that bliss. Everything your higher self ever offers you is the most direct, effortless, harmonious way to your greater excitement. That's why it feels exciting when the things excite you. It's because it leads to greater excitement. That's why things feel heavenly that feel heavenly. And that's why you should act on the things that feel heavenly because they are glimpses of your future. Will you approve of that? Nothing ever happens without your approval, except sometimes higher self goes, you're just so blind to this whole impulse. I have to create this thing for you right now because you're not listening. You're not paying attention. So sometimes it is superimposed in that sense and you're not aware that you're approving or disapproving. But all the time, vibrationally, most of the time, in most things, it honors what you accept into your reality. So most of you are not, you don't have to struggle with creating a reality of your dreams. You just have to approve of the imprints that are already given to you. Higher self knows exactly what would make you the most ecstatic version of your creation. You don't have a clue. So have faith that the impulse is leading you to that reality. All you have to do is press the approve button. I approve. Just stamp yes. Yes. Excitement, bliss, ecstasy, love, yes. Service, yes. Joy, yes. Expansion, yes. Mine is all and all is mine, yes. Everything is one being, yes. I cannot be harmed because all is one being. Yes, nobody else can be harmed because we're all one being. Yes, I live in integrity and with alignment and with joy and love at the core of my choice, yes. I like that sports car, yes. I want a holistic relationship, yes. I don't need a holistic relationship. Yes, I don't need a sports car. Yes, there is no lack. Yes, I'm gonna get that sports car anyway. Yes, I'm gonna get the holistic relationship anyway. Yes, in its own good timing. Yes, etc. Approve, approve. You constantly are asked to hit the approve button. Every time something excites you and you start doubting it, you're like putting that approve button aside and at some point just leaves your vision and all you get used to is, no, I'm not sure. And then you, somebody 20 years later asks you, how are you? I'm fine. I can't complain. It's no way of living your life. I said during a meeting at SAN, the Science and Non-Duality Conference was the past few days. It's in California. Check out scienceandnonduality.com for their website. It's fun. I encourage you to, if, you, if it resonates, go there next year. It's a fun combination of all kinds of things. Anyway, I said one thing that people need to learn in order to really live in the way that I'm teaching is... For, of course, in your own way, in your own fashion, in your own unique expression. But in the accelerated fashion that I'm teaching and sharing and exposing my, you all to by living it, is to become absolutely non-tolerant of mediocrity, of suffering, of contraction. And often we equate this to non-acceptance, but it's not true. It's the farthest from the truth. True, true, true in alignment, high frequency acceptance in holistic perspective alignment with all that is, is to actually be able to say, of course, everything is already accepted. Otherwise it wouldn't exist. Uh, let's get over it. It's not up to us to accept or not accept. It's up to creation to accept or not accept, to be mindful or not mindful, to be allowing what happens or not. Whether we allow or not doesn't make any difference. It's already there too late. Acceptance is not a practice you should focus too much time on. A little bit just to get a taste of the alignment and acceptance that's always already the case. As soon as you realize acceptance is always already the case, you're free to stop accepting things without it leaving the backbone of your sense of peace and allowance. But it's become embodied, just like you know gravity is there. Who of you thinks 12 times a day, gravity is here, how am I going to walk to that door? You know there is gravity, so you forget about it so you can actually live your life within the context of gravity. Acceptance is the same thing. Enlightenment, awakening is the same thing. You can actually start becoming a more effective expression of infinity by accepting that acceptance is already accepted. So you can live your life within the context of peace and acceptance, but not having to focus on it. And then you become intolerant to your own suffering, your own contractions, your own limiting ideas. You stop tolerating 
and calling it spiritually acceptance. Oh, I'm, I'm just accepting what is. You stop doing that because you become alive. You become a fiery feast, feasty. Oh, yes, feisty, feastly, feast-like, like a feast. It's a feast, right? You're devouring it. You become this on fire expression of infinity, and infinity does not tolerate does not tolerate anything or not tolerate anything. Either one is fine. But to become a more effective expression of infinity, you have to learn to listen to your higher self, and that comes with the inability to tolerate your own suffering. So as soon as you suffer, you start naturally bringing consciousness to that. Why do I suffer? You don't go, oh, it's all accepted. Let me just suffer it. We'll move on. Let me just hold the space for it. Holding space is beautiful. But at some point, you know that space is already holding the space. And it just becomes obvious. So you can start living your life within the context of knowing space is space. Okay, and then you can become more effective and more embodied and allow the energy to open up your, it's like your veins, your energetic veins start expanding and quadrupling in their size. The information they can let through, the sense of being alive that they can let through. You become a vessel, a channel, a conduit of higher wisdom, of higher love. And there's no arrogance in that. There is no room for arrogance in that. The moment you become arrogant, boom, boom, you collapse to a lower level of openness. But the more you learn to not come to any conclusions and to not tolerate your own suffering, but to ask, why am I suffering? Be absolutely adamant about resolving why you are suffering. Because you care about your life, do you not? Do you not care about creation? If you don't signal off, and you're always signaling off something, so get out of the state of mediocrity, get out of the state of the automatic mind, think, and become alive, become awake to caring about creation because creation cares about itself. It doesn't want to do redundant things that have already been explored before that don't induce greater liveliness.